Uh, welcome back, guys. Uh, in this, um, so what I have decided to do, we decided to do in this new video tutorial series is that I will be, um, you know, as a developer, from time to time, we have to, you know, you have to leave some, you know, leave your work. You might have to, you know, I don't know, because of the layoff or because of the downsizing or whatever. You will, you know, you have to go for some interview, and then you know, most of the people. Um, we as as a, as a developer, we are pretty good at um, writing code and this stuff, and and you know. But however, you know what I have what I have found is like even though you know we are writing code really good when you know we are not under pressure, like in an interview, once you have you know successfully done your phone interview and everything looks good good, I don't know how it works in the other countries because I, I in I live in USA in the US most of the most of the like small companies. They once you know you do a phone interview is okay, and they would ask you to come to their company and do a live coding, okay. And in this video tutorial, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain to you how to be prepared for you know situation like that, so that you know when we go there, we don't because based on the as a human being, you know, as we go to a new setting and bunch of other people are watching our, our, us coding, it's all even though you're a really good developer, it's always we're gonna mess it up. So, you know, so basically we will do some practice exercise and how to do stuff like that, okay? Uh, I have this little project here called interview question. This is all going to be a C -sharp, you know, I have a C -sharp, uh, code. And as we, just like in my other video tutorial, I will have more, more questions and stuff and how to do implementation and we'll look it into the code. So let's say now you are a new, you know, um, you're a candidate for a company called ABC and they like you, that your resume is awesome, you know, you did phone interview, really good. Now they would like to invite you to their company and want to, and they want you to code it in front of their senior level developer, whoever, you know. And let's say this challenge, this is really a simple question. So let's say uh, let's, this, this code challenge is targeted for us maybe um, mid to, you know, like junior level software developer or maybe mainly a CSR developer, okay, in this case. So you go in there, okay, you know, they talk for a while and everything is good and they ask you to do some coding, you know, hey guys, okay, you, 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 it looks like you know everything, okay, here is a very little problems that you, I want you to solve it, okay. So uh, here we go. So we have a three project here. This is interviewquestion.core. This is the, where we'll be writing code. And we have a unit test right here, okay? So all this code is, I'm, I'm writing this code in Visual Studio 2015. And I have a console application. We're, we're not really going to touch console application. We will be writing code strictly into the unit test project and into our core. That's where I have a little one. Just for now, starting with, we have a class called decimal to binary converter. So, um... Our exercise here is going to be pretty simple. So basically, we are converting a decimal number that as an input, and we have to convert that decimal into a binary number. Okay, this is the method. This is the method. Uh, you will have to implement it in front of those people, whoever, whichever company that you are, you know, applying for. There, right now, there is no implementation. Just to make this pass, the compile is returning zero. We'll be writing this code. And corresponding to this one, we have a unit test here. That is with the same name, but uh, underscore test. That's our unit test Visual Studio unit test project. And here is we have a class called decimal to binary converter with the name test. And we have just this is just a unit test. We just here we just have the you know this field label variable called decimal to binary converter because we have this namespace included, um, yeah, using namespace included here. And then into the constructor, we, all we do is just create instance of that object. And we have a unit test here. So basically, we are saying, if somebody give me the one as a decimal number, the output would be binary also going to be one. If it is four, it's going to be one, zero, zero. If it is 10, one, zero, one, zero. And, and I have some bunch of, you know, complicated code, uh, some tests here. So right now, you know, um, you run the test. When you run the test, as you can see right now, it's a failing. It's the very first thing is failing. It is expecting one. Okay. 
Okay, actually, fail, expected one, actually, it was zero. Then we have a failing test here. So, um, and now we have to do implementation, make sure that all our unit tests pass. Okay, now those developer that they are interviewing to you, they would be, okay, I don't know, it depends upon some company. Some company, they will be watching you, and the other company, okay, you know what, just do this, you'll have a five minutes to implement this one, okay. All right, now you are, you're alone, you know, that you are just watching the monitor, okay, maybe, so if you, <laughs> if you remember from, you know, I don't know, maybe from college or, or, or maybe high school or whatever, you know, can, um, how do you convert a decimal number to binary? You need some sort of algorithm, right? So idea is basically you're going to divide that number consecutively. You're going to divide the number by two. That's why it's a binary. And on each iteration, you're going to keep on dividing the number to, to, to um, number by, it, uh, by two until as long as number is greater than zero, right? Or greater than one. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement it. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, you know, as as a junior developer, I just know some little bit of programming, and you know, let's see. We have this long decimal number. You know, my suggestion would be, you know, just make sure you can at least don't worry about, you know, refactoring or making, you know, writing nice code in in the first iteration. First, make sure your test pass. Okay, so just by looking at this one. How do we implement? We know uh, we, need, we need some sort of loop. Let's start with the while loop. In the loop, let's see, okay, we got this number as input, decimal number. As long as that number is greater than zero or something like that. Okay, we have a loop here. So we are saying Okay, if the number that is coming in is greater than zero, we can do something here inside the loop. The, the something would be finding out the cosine and the remainder of the number, right? So inside it, define here a variable. Maybe um, define two variables here, long, cosine, and remainder. Okay, two variables here. And then on the very first iteration, we're going to find out the cosine. How do you find out the cosine? We know the number that is given to us, and we're going to divide that number by two. This would give us the first co the cosine of the number. And we're also going to find out the remainder. You know, in CSR, finding remainder is pretty easy. All we do is we can use the Maslow operator. So basically, this, this would give the remainder of the number. So now, at this point, we have basically got the cosine and the remainder of this number. Okay, that is good for the first iteration, okay? Now, when you start the second iteration of the loop, this decimal has to be the new number. That new number would be now the cosine. So next thing I'm gonna do right away, I'm gonna say here's my decimal number. And I'm going to say a cosine would be the decimal number now. Okay. So far, so good, right? Uh, at this point, <clears throat> so you, you, of course, you know, it, now we need to collect all the remainders on each iteration. Let's say it's a returning string. And just for now, I define a string variable, string uh, binary number result or something okay this is our very naive first implementation okay of course we can write this um, customized code and you know following the better pattern but in the first iteration don't think about it, any of those things just make sure you know you can just make it compile and just make sure your unit unit test passes all right so now on each iteration once I find the cosine and the remainder and the new decimal number now I have to collect, so I'm going to say binary number result plus equal, I'm going to collect that number, decimal number here. Okay, now I we have at this point, we have this concatenated result. And then once this is all done, we eventually, you know, once we keep on dividing the number by two, it can read number that can be um, 
zero, you know, at some point, at least one zero. So uh, at this point, okay, you know what? I don't know. So I might think return binary number result. So at this point, do you think our implementation is correct? Remember, it's a it's a little mathematical. So we are dividing that number, um, a, a number. Let's say um, we, we let's say our input is four, right? And then we divide that four by two in the first iteration, and the first remainder is is, is a zero, and our um, decimal number would be two, and second iteration is still would be zero, so. This number, even though this number, this result we have right now is in binary form, like it only binary form, I mean to say, it only has one and zero, one zero, one zero, whatever, but it is not really um, in the correct format because, you know, the order, we right now we have top to bottom order because we have to reverse that order when we collect that number, right? So we need... Um, so <laughs> we need something like a reverse the string and basically we have this let's, let's just for now you know just build it everything um rebuild this solution it builds it build okay as you can see right here now let's go into our unit test and run the unit test here uh just for now i'm going to get rid of this one okay run the test okay we have a couple of problems here with the given input 4 we are expecting we are expecting 100 zero, zero, but we we got 210 okay <laughs> there is a couple of problem in our implementation let's go ahead and fix it First of all, it doesn't, it is, just to make sure, make it to a string. Rebuild it and run it we were expecting the result 100 that's the binary form of 4 but we are still getting 210 so what's going on here okay we have a cosine and remainder right here This decimal number equals to cosine. And ha! <laughs> okay, the, the, see, do you see the problem right here? Uh, let me include. We, are, you know, it's my it's my typo of cosine. You know, see, I mean, it's it's also a good example when you know when you are implementing. You know, in, when you are you know you have a limited time that you have to complete this. So uh, what's out for this one right here? I have a decimal number. That's not what I want. I want. I was trying to collect the remainder okay that's what I need to collect and let's go ahead and build our project see it's a very iterative process I mean like you you fixing something in your code and going to go ahead and change it and start testing here do a unit test okay now it's a better Remember, like we were expecting 100, or not really 1, 100 zero, zero in a binary form for the decimal number 4, but we got 0, zero 001. But we want that result in the reverse order, like 100. Zero, zero. Okay, so it's, we kind of basically done the first part. But now we should be able to, um, we, we should be able to, um, you know, reverse this string. So, um, uh, you know, let's let's <laughs> let's say you, you remember like the, when I when I when I started in the beginning, I started the target as a you know junior level developer. Let's say you don't know 
this we can do something like this uh, very easily using lambda expression which I will show you later if you are like a mid-level developer you can basically write that that you can easily convert right here but you know you now you know that you have to somehow the reverse that is string so let's write a little method here called reverse okay let's go ahead and define private method here generate the private method the point of this method is to reverse the result that's coming in okay so how do you reverse the string how do you you need to some sort of loop loop again we have to basically go through each character right and then so um, let's define long define integer index um, let's find out the the length of the length of binary number the binary number result let's grab the length okay so we're gonna go over length of the binary number and as long as that is less than as long as it's greater than or equals to zero and we on each iteration we're just gonna decrement okay we can use the decrement operator here of course there are so many different different ways to do it but this is a very basic I mean like as a junior level developer I don't know how much you already know about computer programming but you might know some people you know kind of genius but like you know the, so maybe you know you know just come, you just came out of college you know you know so that's my audience target for now for this this method implementation okay and here so what we can do here is maybe um, result or something and say to empty string this variable say to empty string on each iteration we're gonna do concatenation we're gonna grab this binary number at the given index Okay, oh, there is a there's a problem right away. You know, maybe I have to make to string that is a character. Remember, like as a in C sharp, the arrays index start from zero to n minus one, so we cannot say link of the binary. So it and we we want to go over index starting with minus one okay and this one has to be or it has to be greater than zero okay maybe and now it's just return the result okay let's see maybe this might let's do our unit test here Okay, we, we, we have some we have a failure here. I think the um, the problem might be here in my um it's a greater than or equals to zero. Let's go to unit test again. Yay! <laughs> a 
Okay, our unit test, you know, as you can see, this the test is all green. That is good. At least we know we have an implementation, but we have some improvement to do. Uh, let's say that was okay if you're a junior level developer and you were able to solve this problem. You know, most probably, you know, you did really good in the interview also. Most probably they would say, you know what, you need to you need have some learning curve, but, you know, as a junior, they, they, they might hire you as a junior level developer, okay, if you can just make this code pass. But let's say you are now mid-level developer and they ask you the same question. Now, if you finish, first of all, always the target has to be you, 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 you make sure your unit test passes. And once that is passes, you know what? Let's go ahead and check some, um, this is a lot of bulky code. Maybe let's say you are a mid-level developer, you have been writing CSR for, you know, code for a while, and you know about all the dot different version of different kind of feature provided by .NET. This reverse we can do very easily using Lambda expression. So instead of doing this, we can do something like this. A couple of lines, string, we're going to do join. And join on empty string. And then we got this um, binary number result. That is a string. We're going to convert that string to a character array. Now we got an array. And it has an extension method called reverse. Okay, we're gonna reverse that. This is all we have to do. Just one line of code. This would do it for us, so we don't have to write this code here. Okay, but of course, you know, as a beginner developer, you we don't know that. Hey, this is how we would do. So um, now, as a mid mid level developer, this is the you know one more optimization I would say we can do this one and we can get rid of this code here okay and let's go ahead and get rid of that one too and make sure let's build in make sure always you know it's iterate it's iterative process and we go in go here um, and make sure our test runs we didn't break anything by refact oops okay we already broke something Okay, not all code returns. Oh, do you see? This is, you know, like, this is what happens when you, of course, I'm missing here, return instead. And that's why it was complaining, hey, the, I, I, I want you to return string, but you're not returning me anything. Okay, that's fine. I can do that. Okay, that's all passed. And make sure our test is good. Okay, that is first improvement. Okay, but looking at this code right here, um, right now we are using we are using so, like um, is option go. I'm, I'm trying to put the line number here. Text editor. This is, I don't know, this, I recently, this, I always prefer to have a line number so that it would be easier for me to explain, right? Okay, right here, I'm using the string. As you know, a string concatenation is kind of, you know, an expensive operation, sort of, but so there is a better way. Instead of using the string, we can use a, well, you know, in a real life, you have to go this and maybe your string, you know, your number might be really, really big. Instead of doing concatenation, we can use a string builder. Okay, so here all we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab this here binary builder, and we're gonna use a append method here and pass that um, the remainder to append it. So uh, only one thing now, you know. This, this is a binary, so we don't have a binary. We don't have binary result right now, so we have a binary builder. So one more thing we have to do before we can do this one, we have to convert that into to a string. This is a oh, binary builder. Okay, 
because we cannot make two character to a string builder. So first we're going to convert that binary builder into to a string. And once it is string, we're going to convert that into to array, reverse it, and join it. That's it. With, uh, you know, blank space here. This is, you know, extra optimization. If you do this one versus what you did the other one, they know you have been programming for a while. You know, you have better idea. You know, so, and plus you have two of these things. You know, they might say, oh, you know what, this guy is really good. We'd like to hire him as a, you know, as a mid-level developer, you kind of know the stuff. And if you want to do one more thing, always make sure, you know, validation is very, very important before you write. So basic, basically make sure, um, you can say, if you pass me a number, decimal number, and that is not a positive, less than is uh, let's say a less than two. That's a negative number. If you pass me a negative number, I'm gonna throw some sort of hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be happy with this. So I'm gonna say throw new argument, argument exception, you know, because hey, what you doing? That, I don't know how to do conversion. You know, there might be a way, but this is only strictly for the positive numbers. So I'm going to say only positive decimal number expected or whatever you wanted to bark at. Okay, that is all good. So um, if you just do this one, you know, like, you know, I mean, you know, you know, basic understanding of computer, you know, CSR language, you have graphs of it. So, um, okay, this is it. This is what I wanted to. This is going to be a, you know, first video tutorial. I have used an example, you know, in the, in the second video, we'll go through a bunch of other examples and go through, um, you know, basically tips and tricks and basically some implementation, okay? I mean, like, you know, as I, as I said in the beginning, as a developer, you know, we have to go through this process. I mean, like, yeah. You never know the company that you're working for, maybe, you know, downsize or whatever. Anyway, guys, I hope, you know, somebody, before you go to an interview, make sure you might start watching this video like this. It's going to be very, very helpful. And, okay, thank you so much for until next video, guys.